Hey there, and welcome today to our program, Vicious Revival. I'm Brian Jordan. We're coming at you live from Los Angeles, and we're coming to the Middle East, to Africa, to the ends of the earth, and we are so excited to be burning with this message of Vicious Revival. I bless you today, wherever you are, and I just release that. Just, just hold up your hands right now as you're, as you're just tuning into the program. You might even think, why am I doing this? You know, God wants you to receive. And just put up your hands, ready to receive all that God has for you today. Because we want to see, and I just want to pray, God, give them all that you have for every person watching this program today. You are a good father, and you are winning the lost. We're going into the harvest. I'm here again with my co-host, Art Montgomery, the FBI man. Art, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you, man. You well? I'm well. I'm oh, well. Oh, man, you're always well. Uh, you because know, Jesus makes us well, doesn't he? Yeah, you know, uh, he not only makes us well, because we've been, uh, how, how long have we been hitting this day in and day out, like 15-hour days? Yeah, we've been going hard, man. You know, you know and I, I've learned a little, a little secret how the gates of hell work. And, and when I'm starting to get tired, you know, my spirit man starts dropping down. My spirit doesn't need rest. It's my body. But so what I figured out here, somebody told me, this gal told me that, and I said, well, that's the gates of hell. That's in Genesis 22. It says that you shall possess your gates of enemy. Come on. In Mark 16, it says, uh, uh, Matthew 16, he says the gates of hell are not shall run you. When you start getting tired, you start getting beat, I've heard enough of this gospel. This is boring. You, that's the gates of hell trying to shut you up. Open up the gates of hell. Open up and let the king of glory and some come in. Start pushing the gates out. I start pushing the gates out, and I started getting fired up. I started getting up here. I don't need it. It's, I, my sleep is, doesn't matter. I, I'm in. I'm pumping. I could get down and do, uh, do push-ups now and handstands. <laughs> I'm so fired up. But, hey, this is exciting because if you ever come across a wall, well, me and Brian come across a wall the other day. We, we, were wanted, a, uh, we wanted a Harley motorcycle on, on our show, but we could not figure out how to get it. Everything was shutting down. So we went to the Harley station, and we started praying that God would give us somebody that, uh, uh, that had a Harley motorcycle that come on our show. And, but we didn't, it was the last minute. We did no way, and we walk into this station, and down behind the Harley was this guy reading us Bible. <laughs> it was like oh, God sent this angel, and you're going to meet him today. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So we have a very special show. Like Art was saying, he's so fired up, I don't know if you caught all that. But we went into the Harley Davidson because we wanted to have a Harley Davidson to put in some of our shows. And, and, you know, we do this show weekly, so how could we do that? And we thought, man, that's a lot of money and different stuff. We'd rather, you know, feed the poor or get the gospel out. Yeah. But this is getting the gospel out. And we do want you to sow into what we're doing and into this television station. We bless that. But God shows, we were looking around, should we rent that one? My son Bryson was there with us. He looks like James Dean. You know, Everybody's like, what is this James Dean doing in the Harley store? And we went to a different Harley store to the other Harley store, because God told the FBI art where to drive, and so we drove in there, we're looking at the, at the rentals, and all of a sudden there's a guy sitting there with his Bible open, he's a pastor, and this is his Harley, what a blessing, what a God setup, because it helps us, because now we have the Harley to use for some of our shows, because we want to go in on Harleys into Cairo, and we, and we know you guys like motorcycles all over Africa, you know, from the bottom to the top and in the Middle East. And, you know, so we wanted to do that, you know. And so without further uh, delay, I want to introduce to you Pastor Tar. Hey, Pastor Tar. Up, Great to see you, man. You're yeah. awesome. Woo. I love his chin, but more importantly, I love his hair. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, check, check this out of the hair. Everybody like my hair? Take a look at it. Good, good job. This is my hair. Pretty cool hair, huh? What do you think of that? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. It's, it's because we like to have fun too. We fun. We bring the joy of the Lord into the gospel of Jesus Christ, and, and this is it. <laughs> yeah, Amen, Amen, man. This guy's wild. This guy's awesome. And so, Pastor Tar, tell us more about yourself. You know, it's amazing to meet you. But you know, just look in the camera there and tell us. You know, maybe tell us what your favorite scriptures are. You know, minister to people. What's God put on your heart for today's show? Well, it, it's pretty amazing because uh, back in. Uh, 1999, September 12th, is when I actually got saved. Wow. And I got saved in a place that I wish most Christians would get saved, and that's in jail. And that's how I met Jesus. Wow. And up yeah. until that point, uh, up at, like, I got saved when I was 41, 
So I see, I see, hate Jesus. I hated God. I hated the scriptures. I thought the scriptures were a big comic strip, and I just didn't believe in them at all, at all. But it only goes to show that only the spirit of Christ can change you, can change a person. And that's on. exactly what happened to me in this jail cell. And, and that's the reason why I'm here today. Most importantly, it's not because of the motorcycle. It's because God has a word for, for us yes. that he gave me last night that I, you, I haven't even told you guys yet oh, what he on. gave me. No. Yeah, tell us, please. Can I have a second? So anyway, uh, as, as we met last night and we were sitting there praying, right before we were getting ready to say goodbye, my rock star friend here, he prayed for us. And the very thing that he prayed about was the thing I'm talking to you guys about now. This is the reason why I'm here in front of this camera, here in front of you guys. When he prayed, well, let me, let me just read this really quick. Yeah, yeah. read it. Because it's always, because the, the power of the gospel is in his word. And a lot of times we have a tendency of adding to God's word. But there's nothing more powerful than his word. Because the Bible says Amen. that it is the power of God. So even if I just read this and I didn't say anything else, this is more important than, than what I'm about to say. But I, I, I believe they're both working together. But this is what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Mm. For if we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, as you did last night, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he, meaning God, who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Yeah. Mm. So as Come you on. were praying this last night, you had no idea what you were praying about. No. <laughs> you probably don't remember what you prayed and about. You're right. You're not the <laughs> but, 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 but check this out. Check this out. As you were praying... What you prayed about last night, you prayed that God would give us, and again, this is the Spirit praying for you, God would give us dreams and visions. Mm. Yes. This is what he prayed about last night. He had no idea what he was praying about, but the Spirit, as the Bible says, as his word says, that he prays for the things we don't know what we're praying about. God prayed through you last night for dreams and, and, and visions, and the vision that, or the dream that God gave me last night when I went home to, and went to bed, he gave me, he gave me the, the dream of the crafty harlot mm. in Proverbs 7. Oh, okay. The entire, the entire proverb. When, when I looked out through the curtain, I saw a man without understanding, and she caught him with her eyes. She caught him with her eyes and lured him. I had that dream last night. Oh, wow. Wow. So it's a, it's a twofold. God is telling you who's watching right now, male or female, to be careful for that harlot. He can be a male or a female. Amen. Coming after your marriage, your marriage, coming after right. me. Anybody who's watching this right now, God, forget about the harlot. Forget about all this stuff right here. God spoke to you through you last night, confirming it today for us to be careful with that harlot. And that's not only through sexual junk but it's also because the heart it also represents false doctrine that's right mm. false preaching mm. so so he's showing us that he's confirming he's confirming that that the holy spirit fell on the day of pentecost he's still working us today if you have not been baptized in the holy spirit you need this yeah because receiving the gospel gives us salvation the Holy Spirit gives us the power to preach those yes. salvation. Power. Yes, he does. Miracle working it's power. It's the power. Yes. So yes. anyway. Yeah, that is awesome, Pastor Tar. You know, just the message of the power of the Holy Ghost. You know, that is something that we need. You know, um, you'll see on one of my programs that, that's coming up, we're going to have a guest, uh, Camille Campbell. She laid hands on me. And I don't know if you know this story because we, we just met recently. Art knows the story well where I was laid hand in a church that did not believe in the, you know, signs and wonders, did not believe in the baptism of the Spirit. And, man, I went speaking in tongues upside down, you know, and it was wild because people could not see me when they were walking by me. 
But I got in trouble in that church. I didn't pursue those gifts for almost eight or nine years, you know. And so, so that was 27 years ago. So only about 18, 19 years. I've been walking in the gifts now. And God's been doing more. Which God redeems everything. So I don't, you know, we don't worry about that. But the thing is that we worry about nothing. You know, I was just reading in Matthew 6, 25. And in that area where it says, you know, we don't worry about anything. Don't worry about what you wear. Don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about anything. Because God is with us. And, but, you know, that encounter. And I just met her recently. After 27 years, that lady, and she's also part of Iris uh, Global Ministries with me, and we didn't even know that. And what was amazing, Pastor Tara and Art, was when I looked into her eyes and I realized who she was after not seeing this lady who prayed over me 27 years ago, I saw really like her face changed and her eyes changed, and I could see that one person that was, man, she was a firebrand. She was a, they could, we call her like Hurricane Camille, and she's, she was on fire, and she's still been on fire, but she's been kind of bottled up, and man, the Lord is releasing her ministry now, and God is releasing it. I just want to believe for you right now out there that you, maybe you're down and out. Maybe you're like Pastor Tar was in prison, and God is going to release you back into your destiny. Maybe you've never been saved, God is going to reach you in that prison where you're watching tonight, even in other countries. You know, maybe you are in the bush bush, you know, somewhere like Tanzania, and you're gathered around, you know, and you're gathered around the fire, and you got the generator going, and the TV is working, you tune into the, to, to the way TV, and you're watching us tonight. You know, Jesus is Lord, and he's there for you, but he also wants you to be Filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost yes, so that you can see signs and wonders. Pastor Tar, I want you to tell us too, what, how did you get converted in prison? Like, what was that experience? Dude, you know, I mean, it, it, was, it was amazing. What happened was is that, is that when I was looking at 13 years, I was sitting, the first thing I thought about was never seeing my kids again. Mm. That was the first thing I thought about. Wow. Jesus was the last thing in my mind. And, and there was other Christians that were in there, and they were talking to me about Jesus, Jesus this. And I was like, I even said to them, I go, the last thing I need right now is to hear about Jesus. Mm. No, yeah, wow. So I, I don't need that right now. Just stay away from me. I was, I was arrested on, on Thursday, and on Sunday, they, you know, this, they have their TV sets and all the pods and all that where it's, you know, it's piped in. And I was sitting there watching on a, on a big screen, and... Now, you have to understand this. Up until that very second, I was denying Christ. Mm. I denied his word. I denied his love, his grace, his salvation, mm. all these things. I, I, I kept denying for 41 years. Wow. And then the TV came on, and the preacher started preaching. And I, I got to be honest with you guys. As soon as he, he mentioned the name Jesus, I started crying. I broke down. Now, think about this. And this can happen to you. Yeah, Up until that God. moment, I denied him. I hated him. I hated his word. It's like, uh, whatever. I, you know, I, Christians used to come witnessing to me, and I used to push them and physically attack them. Wow. When that preacher started talking about Jesus, the, the, the mention of his name, like the Bible says, is power. It is power. It was, it, Dunamis power. So he started mentioning Jesus, and I started crying. Hmm. And I cried so hard, I have never cried that hard before or since. Amazing. And all I can remember, I didn't even hear him preaching. I didn't hear him say a word. All I heard was the name Jesus, and I cried and I cried until the very end of his sermon. I remember him saying, if anybody wants to receive, and when he said receive, I just, I, I was done. Yeah. I was charcoal. I was finished. <laughs> charcoal. And all he says, if anybody wants to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, all you have to do is believe and just pray. And I did it. I was done. And immediately I was preaching to the, my inmates, even the guards. Even, immediately. Immediately. Even the judge. Even the judge I was preaching to. Every single person. And this is before I even opened up the scriptures. I didn't even mm. know I was supposed to preach. Mm. I had no idea. Man, I'm getting fired up now. But seriously, <laughs> no. I, was, I was preaching. But, but know this. I learned this the hard way. I was preaching a lot in my little spirit for about a year. I was on fire for God. I was talking to people about Jesus, but not until I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That the Bible talks about, and I know a lot of preachers and pastors and teachers, they deny this. But I know firsthand because it happened to me. Yeah. When I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, now it's the dunamis 
of his spirit that preaches. It's no longer me, it's him. It's it the power true. of the spirit that's preaching now. It, it, it is true. And, um, you know, nothing can separate us from God, people. I, I just want to read Romans 8, 28. God just put that on my heart as you were talking. It says, and now we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. God has called us, even when you were in that prison cell, even when you were in the filth that you got in as a fireman, even when I almost got into, you know, Satanism and the occult, when some of my friends were and I was interested in that as a young teenager. Even when those things were after us, he had, pre, he had called us out. He's a big God, and he's able. He's the Lion of Judah, and he's roaring over you. You know, we are going to take this message uh, soon. At the end of the year, Cape to Cairo. We want you to be a part of that. We're looking at October and November. We're going to do two parts of this trip up Africa from Cape Town. We're going to be hitting strategic nations all the way to Cairo and Jerusalem. We believe that God is going to call some of you. And this is going to be for those that are filled with the power of God. Because we're going to need to lay hands and see people recover. We're going to encounter witch doctors. We're going to encounter, you know, difficulties at borders and governments. But you know what? We don't. We don't care if we encounter those things because it is the power of God unto salvation. And I guarantee you, God will deliver us. And there will be some parts of the trip that will be amazing. You know, Victoria Falls in Zimbabwe, one of the most beautiful sights. I mean, the most powerful thing I've ever seen in my life. This thing is way bigger than Niagara Falls art. This thing is amazing. And we're going to be, you know, getting these Harleys going, you know, all the way up into Cairo. Why don't you tell people about the, the second part of the trip as we're going to be in North Africa up into Cairo. Tell the people out there in the world about that well uh, you know as we leave uh, we leave uh, uh, Zimbabwe we're, we're going to head up maybe the next track into Uganda and Uganda is where I minister a lot of, a lot of people I preach every week I preach every week to people on uh, radio in Uganda and, and it, it really has uh, uh, touched them and the name of the station is radio broadcast for champions and uh, and you guys are champions and I want you to remember say I'm a champion I'm a champion. We, we want to, this, uh, we're, we're going to take uh, from a beat up old Warren cushion that hides from, uh, from God to champions that blaze across the, the deal, the cast out uh, demons, witch doctors. We're, we're going to set people free, get people healed. We're tired of Christians laying down low. God is God. God lives in you, champion. Yes. You, you understand. You're, you're not that great, but with Jesus, he uses your body. To, give him your body. Give him your lips today, why don't you? <laughs> hey, and speaking of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> Yeah. He says, I'm coming across Africa. I'm unleashing glory. I'm releasing fire, fire, fire from all of these men. They may not look like them, but I'm going to get on them. I'm going to put the glory on them. And if you step in it, you'll be glorified. And because I live, not you, yo, fire for you champions. And we're coming to Cairo. We're excited about you guys in Cairo. We're excited about you people in Ethiopia. We burn for you. We burn for you. Our hearts are burning for you. And that means Christ is burning for you because we need that fire. Oh, God, we need that. And you do too. Uh, okay, now I'm going to turn it back to Brian because he's got some other important things to go because we are fired up, and this is going to be one radical shit. Yeah. One of my favorite words in the Shona language of Africa, of Southern Africa, is moto. It means fire. And we say, muya mutene moto, Holy Spirit fire. Just be released on you right now with the fire of God fire. be released over you. You know, one of the things that we love doing, we were having um, some fun before the show, and, you know, or you asked me, the, you know, that it's really fun to, yes, to take yes. things. This is kind of cool, guys. <laughs> <laughs> to take things that are not so good and turn them into good. We're, we're singing songs like, you know, dum dum chim, dum dum chim. <laughs> Son of God came to the earth one day, taught us how to walk, how to talk, how to pray. He got blood on his face. Big disgrace. <laughs> Kicking Satan's can all over the place. <laughs> he will, he <laughs> will. <laughs> Rock yeah, you. Oh, you want to do that? This is fun, isn't it? Hey, we're going to have fun, guys. <laughs> we're going to have fun, yeah, yeah. What was that? That, that song was called Bad to the Bone. It was like, you guys need to do da 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 from the day he was born. All the shepherds gathered around, gazed the wide wonder. 
of the Savior that bound. The Virgin Mary spoke up. She said, this one's alone. They could tell by heaven's rays. He was holy and from the throne. Blessed. 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 Blessed to the bone. Come on. And we believe God is healing bone cancer even right now. Because you're blessed to the bone. Blessed to the bone. Cancer, go in the name of Jesus. Men of God, believe with me right now. Let's just stretch our hands toward the people. Yeah. You know, there are people out there that are on their deathbeds right now. Cancer has been such a robber of you. Uh, diabetes has you torn up. I see someone, they have a gout in their left leg, and it's propped up. In the, they're even thinking about amputating your leg. It's so bad. God is touching, I think it's in Virginia or North Carolina in the United States of America. God is speaking to you, and he is also reaching out. I see a fire touching down in Syria. And God, you are watching in Syria, and God has heard you, and there's fire healing angels coming upon, descending upon your house with a love for you, because God's love is vicious for you. We talk about vicious revival, but that's because his love is vicious for you. Pastor Tar. This is a vicious love that God has, and it chased you down. Yes. What are you doing now? You know, I know you have the, the Harley ministry, and you, you do different stuff. You ride around Hollywood. Tell the people, you know, in the, in the world, what do you do riding around through Hollywood? So the deal is, is that I, I do a lot of street witnessing off the motorcycle. I, I do some courier work during the day. Okay. So I'm out in the streets all the time. So, you know... You know, a lot of times I go out there, it's just, it just throwing myself out there and seeing what God does. Because a lot of times we, we, we're like thinking in our heads, well, this is what my plan is. But, but Jesus says, you know, don't worry about what you're going to say. Just go out there and I will give you the words. So if we really believe that because we're, st we're studying his words, what his word tells us, we just step out in faith. Because it doesn't always have to happen like on the streets of Hollywood or, or L.A. or South Africa. It, it can be, in, you know, in your apartment complex, you go downstairs to the laundromat. And boom, you know, yeah. you're going to start talking to somebody. But it's, it's just being led by the Spirit of Christ. And like the Bible says, look at you guys, it, it, to me, it, it works like this also. Whatever you're going to be putting into your heart, if you're watching Oprah all day long or soap operas, whatever you're watching, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. If you're spending time with the Lord in prayer and, and reading with other believers, allowing the Holy Spirit to use your gifts, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. So whatever you're putting in, that's what's going to come out. The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Mm. So whatever I'm putting in, that's what's going to come out. So when I'm out and about in the street because I'm putting in God's word all the time and hanging out with Christians, that's all I want to talk about. You ever notice when you're hanging out with non-believers, it's boring. You have nothing to talk about. All you want to do is hang out with believers again. But if you're hanging out with, with non-believers and you're having a good time, that's not a good sign. Even the Bible says that. So always be filled with God's word. The enemy is going to try so hard to get you not to spend time in his word. This is the sword. This is the power of God. Don't ever think at secondary. Don't ever think, oh, I didn't get a chance to read. Don't ever, don't ever think that that is coming from the pit of hell. Always spend time in God's word. That's the sword. That's the power. That's everything. This is more important than our own kids. This is everything. It's the power of God. Amen. Amen. Well, that's the end of our program for today. And we're so blessed. Thanks for coming, Pastor Tarman. Thank man. you. Thanks for, thanks for blessing us with this. And our, we're going to close it out. But let's just, let's just join hands, man, join and let's hands. pray together. Join hands. Let's, yeah. We Father, we thank you yes. for vicious revival vicious. being yes, released Lord. Yes, Lord. to the ends of the earth. Yes. Yes. God bless you. Thanks for God watching. Bless you. God bless vicious you. revival. Yeah.